databases, uh, this way is uh, just much better to do it. So, coming to the uh, most popular question, um, performance or speed. Um, and again, this is just a test. Um, I, I want to express it. every client is different, every solution is different, so you have to test it by yourself uh, in your specific environment. Uh, there's one test with SIP where uh, they tested uh, 700 SIP calls, but we are talking with RTP, but we are call, uh, talking about a two deck uh, call. So actually, we are having uh, 1,400 uh, connections uh, with RTP. Without RTP, uh, it's going to be 7,000, and that was tested on a quad core 2 gigahertz um, with just one giga, uh, gigahertz of RAM, and the load uh, was never more than 40%. Uh, so again, we are having problems with the limitations of the operating system and the network. It's not limitations of um, gate itself, which is just incredible. I don't know, Nena, can you tell something about this? Or They worked with you on that, right, didn't they? And with you folks, so that, that, I'm pretty sure that's happening through a single one. Well, that, that looks right, because well, what Gate is doing is they're using that high-performance EDM API that I don't know if anybody will remember my presentation, but they're using a span-based API, so they don't use the channel base. So for every the span, there's only one device. So they're doing, they're pulling data out and they're muxing it in their engine. So that was a while ago, as you can see, it's an AMD 1.2. I don't think you buy that machine anymore. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, it, it makes sense. And that's why it's 80%. So you put that on a quad core, and the quad core probably run that at 5% or 10% load. So again, uh, pure performance. It, it is incredible. Diana was really proud that that was a 1.2 gigahertz. Yeah. She, she right. wanted to make it a point that we, <laughs> we, we, we used the, uh, that, that particular uh, system here. Okay, what is also a very ni a nice feature is you have full access to the audio stream. So you can think, do things like um, dump uh, information in a prepaid system, saying that um, the account uh, ran out of minutes. Uh, you can just do that on the fly in the audio. Um, that's nothing, not a big, a big deal of them, for them. And uh, yeah, actually, that's, that's it. Um, we were asked to, to make it short. As I said, um, if you have any if you have any questions, the best way is install Yate, find their documentation, play around a little bit. They have a very very active um, IRC channel. <laughs> IRC. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, mailing list. Sorry. Um. Yeah, Dan was just saying if, if we, we have some time, if we if people have questions, we'll do our very best to answer them. We're still newbies at this ourselves, so uh, forgive us if we can't give you the answers you're looking for. But uh, if there are any questions or comments, that would be more than welcome as well. Yeah. How would you rank the uh, three possible open source that we've seen so far, order complexity, asterisk, free switch, and game? That's a, that's a really interesting question. Um, I, I, wow, that's a great the, question. The, the, pro the problem is, Asterisk is not easy itself. It just, you know, Asterisk from, from all has the best documentation right now, thanks, for example, for Jim. But uh, it's just not easy. And the other just have a deck of the same documentation. So I think all three of them are. I, I, I find asterisk is a little less um, logical in a way. It, 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 there's a lot of times where you're going, really? Okay. And when you're learning how to use it. But it, if you go through, you, like the dial point's fairly easy to explain to someone who's not really comfortable with, with computer technology or anything like that. That's what I find. I can, I can show simple dial plan to a customer in asterisk. And they'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, I see how that works. Um, whereas if you look at something like Yate and FreeSwitch, um, it's a you need a little bit more of a development 
I think, skill set in order to really get under the hood. But once you do, I think it's, it's, it, it becomes a little more pleasurable because uh, they were designed with developers in mind. So, you know, Asterisk is, is it's coming up on 10 years old. And when, when Mark started it, he had no, he had no concept of what it was going to become. And, and so I think the, the advantage of like FreeSwitch and Yacap is they can actually benefit from all the mistakes that were made uh, in Asterisk and say, okay, well obviously that's not a good way to do that, so let's, let's raise the bar, you know? So I don't know if that answers your question, because that's a, that, I think that question depends on the person who's, who's looking at it. I would think if you had a lot of development talent and you were coming into this space with no knowledge at all, I would be inclined to think that E8 and FreeSwitch would be easier to comprehend than Asterisk because they follow a more logical methodology from the development perspective. That, that's my opinion. Yeah, I find, you, but, but I, again, I find all three of them very hard to learn. Yeah, that's beginner. a good point. And, and that's, that's the reason why most of us make a living from that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, thanks everybody. Um, here's the URL. Have a look. And um, yeah, uh, try it. Thank you.